Hello and welcome to another screencast about optimization problems. So this one is a sort of financial problem, real, uh, very common real world sort of thing here. So let's let R be the monthly rent per unit in an apartment complex that has 100 units in it. So a survey reveals that all units can be rented when R, the rent, the monthly rent, is $900, and that one unit becomes vacant for every $10 increase in rent. And so suppose that the average monthly maintenance per occupied unit is $100 a month. So we're gonna do a couple of things here. Eventually, we're going to find a formula for the net cash intake, which is revenue minus maintenance costs, and then find the rent that maximizes cash intake. Again, something very nitty gritty useful in the real world world. Before we do that, an extra step that we're going to do separately is show that the number of units rented is given by this formula, n equals 190 minus r over 10. Okay, well let's do this uh, first part first. So to think about this function here, okay, it's asking for a function that gives n, n is the number of units as a function of r. So I need to be able to plug in an r, a rent value, and get n out. So let's think about how this uh, n function works here. It does tell us some information about this up in the problem statement. F most importantly, the first thing you see is all units can be rented when r equals $900. So if I'm thinking that n is a function of r, okay, one thing I know about this automatically is that f of 900, if I put in $900 for the rent, I rent all the units, all 100 of them. So f of 900 is 100. So that's one data point from the function that's given to me. Another thing that I know about this is the rate at which that function changes. One unit becomes vacant with each $10 increase in rent. So in other words, uh, when n uh, increases by $10, that gives me an increase in, or decrease in, or, I'm sorry, when r increases by $10, r is the rent, then n will actually drop by one unit. Now in our calculus language, we would say that when uh, the delta r equals 10, okay, the change in the rent is 10, then the delta n, the change in the number of units rented, is minus one. And that's constant, that's a constant change. That rate never slows up, never slows down, never speeds up. So what we learn here is that this thing, uh, f of r, is actually a linear function. Okay, and I have a data point that's on my linear function, and I can see that my slope here, the slope of my linear function, that would be the change in output divided by the change in input, delta n over delta r, and that would be negative 1 over 10. So this is a linear function with a slope of negative 1 tenth and a point uh, through it of 900 comma 100. So that means I can go down here and write a formula for it. So the point slope form for the equation of the line would tell me that n minus a known n value equals the slope times r minus a known r value. Remember in this function, r is what we're plugging in, it's the independent variable, and n is what we're getting out. So if I just load in what I know now, I have n equals, uh, or n not equals, but n minus 100, that's my known uh, n value, equals negative 1 tenth r minus my known rent value, which is 900. So now I just need to work this uh, formula down until it looks like what the problem was asking for. So n minus 100, uh, just to multiply through on the right side, is negative 10, negative 1 tenth r plus 90. Uh, that's negative a tenth times 900. And then add the 100 to both sides, and I get n equals 100 uh, minus 1 tenth r plus, 1, plus 90. And that finally gives me n equals negative 1 tenth r plus 190. And that is the formula that was asked for up here in the problem statement. And the domain here, uh, that's given to us basically because the rent, uh, all units are rented when R is $900. That's as low as you can go. And uh, if you go up, if you make the rent uh, 1900, uh, you will find that your N is equal to zero. So that's the natural boundaries on your rent. Okay, so now we have a formula that tells us the number of units rented as a function of the rent. We're not going to clear the board here and do part B. Okay, so now that we have our number of units rented as a function of the rent price, let's uh, finish the problem off. We need to find a formula for the net cash intake and then determine the rent that maximizes it. So since I'm trying to maximize cash intake, I definitely need a formula for cash intake. Even if it didn't say so, I'd have to, that'd be part of the problem I'd have to do. Now the net cash intake, let's call that I here, uh, it says is revenue minus maintenance cost. So it's a revenue minus maintenance cost, just to use some letters here. Now if you're not familiar with the finance here, revenue is just the uh, number of items that you sell 
uh, number of items sold times the price per item per item. So if I had a lemonade stand, for example, and sold glasses of lemonade for two dollars a piece and sold twenty of them somehow, I would end up with forty dollars in revenue minus maintenance costs. We'll get to the maintenance costs in a minute. I'll just put that M right there. Now for us, the number of items sold, uh, that means the number of units that I've rented. So that's really just uh, N. That's what we've been calling N. And the price per item is the rent uh, that I'm charging per unit. And that's what we've been calling R. Now M, in the problem it said it was $100 a month per unit uh, for maintenance. So the total maintenance cost would be $100 per unit times the number of units, which is N again. Uh, so here I have a formula for i in terms of two variables, and so I need to substitute something in to eliminate one of those. Uh, n, uh, we just found out, is a function of r, and so I can substitute that in. Uh, negative one-tenth r plus 190 times r from up here, minus 100 times negative one-tenth r plus 190. Okay, so now uh, it's not cleaned up, but I have intake as a function of r. The r is the only variable in here. Since we're running a little low on time and I want to get to the calculus part here, I'm just going to give the final simplified result here without going through all the algebra. Uh, it turns out that i is negative one-tenth r squared plus 200 r minus 19,000. And that's your cash intake as a function of r. Again, if you want to see the details on that, just pause the uh, video and you can work those through. So now let's uh, remove all this stuff in the middle here and work with my function for i. What I want to do is maximize cash intake. Now I have a formula for i as a function of r, so I need to find i prime, just to do that real quickly, that is a negative one-fifth r plus 200, and uh, I'm going to use the derivative to find the critical numbers, which uh, would be places where the derivative is zero or undefined. The derivative is a linear function, so it's never undefined. That's not an issue. So I've just got to set this equal to zero. And so that means that one-fifth r equals 200, or r equals $1,000. Now that's not the, necessarily the end of the problem. I have to test this critical number next to see if it gives me an extreme value. I can do that in one of two ways. I can use the first derivative test, or in this case, I might want to use the second derivative test because the first derivative is really simple. Uh, it's just a linear function. So let's pass over here and look at i double prime. And that's just going to be negative one-fifth. That's a constant. And that, of course, is a negative constant. So what this tells me is that i, the function i, is always, uh, over its entire domain, concave down. Okay, so I have a critical number, a place where the derivative is zero, and it, on a concave down function, it's got to look like this. Okay, it's got to be a local maximum at least, and uh, so this gives this makes i have a local maximum. Is it an absolute maximum? Is what we want to know now, and the answer is sure it does because this is the only critical number, and i is always concave down. So this is the only shape this graph ever takes on. So that's our answer. Our in cash intake is actually maximized globally when R is $1,000. We get that by the same calculus that we employ on every other optimization problem. So have fun with these and enjoy.